Okay, we're going. We're going. Ed McClary, drummer extraordinaire, the man who has ruled San Francisco for the last 30 plus years. I know. You know, I, I, I have to say, about it's always glad to see your smiling face. Thank you, Michael. I've heard a lot of your drumming lately. It's been way too much fun. And seeing a lot of your drumming in yeah, the interesting you, videos. Yeah. It's been fun. I've been having a good time doing these projects. Well, a lot of drummers have come through your place to just even get a hold of your stuff, right? That's right. They have. They've been coming over, and uh, I'm happy to have my get. I get a free lesson every time they come. It's the okay. best part. Well, I think it's a good trade-off. They get first-class service, a great rig, everything wired down to the minutia. Yeah, and, man. That's uh, right. And yeah. yeah okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm wired in, ready to go. All I have to do is press asterisk, and I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, it sounds really simple, but I have a feeling there's a lot more to it. Uh, there was a little bit of setup involved, yeah. Would you mind sharing your setup? Like, show me your rig? Uh, I will try to do that as long as I don't pull this cable out of my computer. We're good to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, let, me turn, let me just turn this thing around here. Let's see if we can get a picture of my rig here in the background. Oh, that's beautiful. And I have a feeling we're going to go in depth. Is that sounding right? We are going to go in depth. Okay, let's <laughs> go there right now. Yeah, man, you got it. Can't wait. Hi, everybody. This is Ed McClary, and I'm going to show you how I have set up to record my drum set in my studio. This is the whole rig you're looking at pretty much right here. There is the audio workstation, which is set up over here, that you can see. On the drum set, I have 12 separate microphones set up on this rig, which I will give you an explanation. There are two microphones set up on the bass drum. The uh, mic on the inside catches the attack of the bass drum on the back head, and the outside mic here catches the low end of the bass drum. And then I mix those together to try to create a nice fat drum sound, if that's what I've got. I'll walk around to the other side over here. And you can see that I've got uh, individual mics for each part of the instrument. So for example, we start here with the hi-hat. All of these mics are gonna be Shure SM98s is the number of these microphones. So I have one for each tom that you can see here. There's the 10 inch, the 12 inch, the 14 inch and the 16 inch. On my snare drum, I have an SM57 on the top and I have an SM56 on the bottom. Let's see, where is, if I can see this thing. Uh, up above, I'm also using Shure large diaphragm condenser microphones that you can see here for overhead left and overhead right. Anyway, it's a great sounding drum kit. They're great sounding microphones. And I have each one of these mics assigned to my audio interfaces, which are over here. On the top, we have a 14 channel audio mixer. And down below, we have the Mark of the Unicorn are the Motu audio interfaces that I use to uh, the microphone signal from the drums into the computer running into my DAW, which is Logic. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it right now. I'll give you a further explanation when we start looking at Logic. My name is Ed McClary. I'm going to show you how I have my drum studio set up for recording. Basically, I'm using two eight-input Motu audio interfaces. 
and I am recording with Logic, which is my digital audio workstation. So first you can see that uh, over here I have the Motu audio setup. Both of these Motus are 896 high definition uh, interfaces and there are eight inputs for each one. I have 12 drum mics set up which go into each of the individual channels and the extra four channels that I have are set up to record what other instruments I may be working with which could be keyboards, bass, guitar, etc. A very important thing to have is my Excel spreadsheet which is over here and, and here I've created this spreadsheet so that I could see where the microphone from the instrument is coming and where it is going since I have these different Motus that I'm using with all these different inputs. So you can see, for example, I have labeled it kick in, which means the microphone that's on the inside of the kick, microphone on the outside of the kick, top of the snare, bottom of the snare, etc. So when you look at this, if you look at kick one, you can see that it goes into the Motu number one. And then that goes, and where it says digital up here, that goes into the logic input, which I also assign to number one. That's how I can track the signal flow going from the inside bass drum mic all the way into logic up here where it says kick one. And you can just go down the list. As I plugged things in and put them in logic and did the assignments, I made a list of each one of them so that if I ever needed to find out where things were and how to get back to them, that I'd be able to do that. So here is my logic program. There are 12 drum tracks assigned here, starting with kick one. You can see the numbers are over here, going all the way down to 12 to cover all of the different microphone inputs coming from my drum kit. So kick in and out, snare top and bottom, the hi-hat, overhead left, overhead right, uh, five separate toms, 8-inch, 10-inch, 12-inch, 14-inch, 16-inch. Along with that, so if I highlight this kick track, you can go down to the panel descri that describes uh, everything that goes on with this particular channel. So if we go down here, we can see that this is assigned to input 1. And you can choose whichever input going here, but because it's coming from mic 1, which is the inside bass drum over through my interface it going into input one of the Mo2 then you can see that it appears here as input one. This is true for each one of these tracks that I have created. So there's the outside kick mic as you can see input number two. Snare top just goes on down pending on where the interface uh, where, where, the, where I've plugged into the different interfaces. Another feature that I've done here is that I have created groups for my tracks. So all of these drum tracks have been assigned to group one. You can see groups up here in the top left corner. Automation mode, so everything is affected on all the tracks regardless of what I do. If I change the volume on one track, it changes the volume on all of them. If I mute the one drum track, it mutes all of them. Same with solo, same with record. So for example, if I go up to the first track, first drum track, and I click on record, which puts it into record ready, you can see that all of the record, all of these drum tracks are all flashing red, which means they're in record ready and all ready to go. I've done the same thing for the keyboard, bass, and guitar tracks for convenience, so that they also have the record uh, button checked. So if I go down and I'm ready to go into record, I can click record and it automatically puts all three of those tracks in record. So as soon as I hit record, everybody's in at the same time. Very handy feature. If we go look at the mixer here, in the mixer, it, it has all the same functionality here. If I click on record, it, as you can see, it puts all of the drum tracks in record. But let's say I just want to listen back just to the instrument tracks, but I don't want to hear all the drum tracks because I want to re-record the drum tracks, perhaps, and retrack them. So I can take the drum tracks, I can click on mute, and as you can see, it mutes all of the drum tracks. Therefore, when I play, it's only going to play back 
the keys, the organ, and guitar tracks. Also a very handy feature. That's the basic setup I have here. Of course, it goes much more in depth, but the idea is plug in your microphone, go into your interface, out of the interface, into Logic, into your audio program, whatever you're using, and do the input assignment that, that we see over here. Input assignment, and then that gets it into your program. Then you will be coming out of your program. You can see my master output right here. And as I, co I come out of that master and I go back into my audio mixer, and that's where I can adjust playback volume. That's pretty much it for a basic setup. If you got any questions, I'm here. I'm available. Call anytime. Thanks. Ed, thank you so much. I really appreciate that tour. It was my pleasure. I love doing this stuff. I can't wait to start up and do it again. Okay, Ed. Thanks so much, and we'll see you later. Nice to see you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me.